social media, is it a, blur, a burden or a blessing? And I guess by my introduction, you more or less figure, figure out what, what we feel at, at, uh, at KLM. Um, a few words uh, on, uh, on what we're going to do uh, today. Uh, today, there's a, a couple of stuff uh, uh, I'm going to talk about. The DNA of our company, um, I think we speak a lot about technology this morning, but at the end of the day, happy employees make happy customers. What are we doing with social media and what further opportunities do we see ahead uh, in that field of, uh, of social media? And for us, social media has been really a catalyst of what we are doing. Sometimes a burden, but mostly a blessing. Um, a short introduction for what is necessary uh, for those of you not knowing our company, KLM. You have been sleeping for the last 99 years. Um, we exist for 99 years and next year will be proudly uh, being the first carrier, being around for, uh, for 100 years, uh, still operating under its uh, original name and yet try to be innovative uh, all the time. And I think if there's anything about aviation, it's the passion of connecting people. And, and I think it was in the video we saw earlier today uh, about the relief and the passion of aviation. I guess what we are doing, and our founder, Albert Plesman, put it, the ocean of the air connects all people. And that was back in 1919. And I guess in 2019, it's still very accurate in terms of, uh, of where we are. Um, very much from the start, we learned uh, that the, uh, the only way to put, uh, to put an airline up in the air is to put our customers first. And from that core belief, we build on innovation and we started to innovate and move from that innovation forward, yet combining it with a very personal approach with happy employees. I think, again, uh, I could not stress it enough. We do a lot on digital, we do a lot on social media, but if your staff is not happy, uh, we, we can see it back in our promoter score from the customers right away. So happy customers really make the difference and make it more effective for our customers. So what do we do on that? We introduced even some of small personal touches. And this morning, taking the 745 flight out of Amsterdam into Dublin, sitting on board of the aircraft, and at one point in time, and it's just a one hour 50 flight, one of our cabin attendants rushes alongside with a small bag like this, small bottle of champagne pulling out. And she comes back a couple of minutes later and I ask her, what have you been doing? She said, yeah, that was a passenger's birthday. I just gave him a handwritten card, a small bottle of champagne. And I said, what was the reaction of the customer sitting on row 20, 23? Thrilled, excited. So the personal touch by a handwritten card, a bottle of champagne could be done. And again, I think it was also in the panel this morning, we knew that, of course, from the customer profiles and we have all that information available. So how do we use that information and how do we make sure that we make a good connection between a personal touch and yet using the, the assets of technology and data available? Social media for us has really been a catalyst for creating a closer connection to our customers. And in fact, it's, I guess it's widely recognized in 2017, Accenture recognized us as the, uh, the best customer service when it comes to uh, the, the digital airline. And in fact, it all started back in 2010 when the European airspace was covered by the S-Cloud and our traditional call centers could no longer handle the massive numbers of calls coming in. And we figured that, in fact, social media was a much more effective and a much more efficient way to communicate with big groups of customers at the same time, and much quicker, much more adequate than traditional press updates or news release uh, could ever be. So we, in fact, we've gone quite a, a journey ever since. So we started with the S-Cloud, we introduced a 24-7, 10 different languages, uh, social media hub. We moved then to some, and I'm sure some of you have seen it, some sort of more marketing gimmicks like uh, meet and seat, so you can choose who's sitting next to you on board in the aircraft. Then we move to the more commercial side of, of, of social media, and now we really change our strategy when it comes to being where our customers are. So let me take you to this, uh, to this journey. In fact, and I guess to this, this, this picture, you could look in many different ways, but in fact, when we started with our social media back in 2010, it started mostly as a service. People were pulling up a question and we were giving an answer. Is the flight leaving? It's delayed, where should I go? It was just a service, a, a question and answer. Later on, we discovered it has a huge brand and reputation impact. Whatever you do on social media is covering your brand and reputation. So how do we find that balance between the speed 
and the reactivity needed on social media and yet such a big impact on, social, on, on, on your brand and reputation, positive or negative. We had one incident where the Dutch lost a soccer match, or actually we won one, so it's a while ago. Um, we won a soccer match uh, and uh, our social media team put out a nice post to the team which lost and it was perceived very bad. So it is, it's, a, it's a nice thing and eventually your image is really, is really damaged by that. So how do you enable your staff and all the different staff to work there, yet make sure that your reputation is being safeguarded? From that brand and reputation, we moved onwards to a more commercial approach. You can sell tickets now, you can do your upgrades now, you can buy uh, all kinds of stuff, ancillary revenues, through that, uh, through that social media platform. And I guess the stage we are now is a much more conversational approach. What does it mean? It means it's a much more personalized approach. And I guess it is back to the, to the example of Massimo this morning. <coughs> by knowing who you are and by knowing what is your preferences and by having your profiles and your history, in fact, we can give a much better service. We can work much more targeted on our brand and reputation and we can be much more effective in our commerce. So it's not only a sort of new dimension in what we're doing, this personalization, but it's also making it very much supportive to the other aspects. And with that, in fact, it is more scalable. And I guess that's the essence of what we're doing. The scalability of social media is probably one of the biggest challenges every company, and for us no exception to that, every company has. And the scalability, and coming back again to the example, the scalability is much more difficult when the average number of flights a customer at KLM is 1.4 flights a year. Which means we should have a different approach. And if you look how much times you look on your Google or how much times you look on different platforms, the history and the data information is just so much more than what we have. So in fact, we should, we should have a, a different approach. So the social media service is really the backbone of our success. That's how it started, with a question. Question and answer, question and answer. But again, it is not so much scalable. So it, it's, it was good in one stage, but it should be scalable. When it comes to brand and reputation, we discovered, and here you find two of the videos which we posted on, and the number of views we made. And if we compare that to the sort of traditional marketing approach we have, I think the good things of these videos, there was no management involvement at all. So they were great videos, absolutely great. They were made by our social media teams and they were just being put online and, and in fact we had 40 million and the, the latest one on the Christmas bonding buffet at Schiphol, even 63 million uh, views. And with that, in terms of brand awareness and reputation development, it's really a very effective way in developing it and much more quick than any other way. After the sort of conversational and brand and image, uh, it's more the commercial part. So we basically started to sell tickets through social media. Again, scalability was an issue here because you need to have a sort of transactions being done and the financial part of the transactions being done. So where, where we are, we feel, and that was the question I think Peter put forward to me, Peter Harman said, Peter, is social media for you, is it a, a blessing or a burden? I think it would be for us 90% of the time a blessing and 10% of the time a burden. Because we get some 130,000 incoming messages a week. And if one or two of these messages is being screwed up, we all know what it could do in terms of exposure. So I would really favor it as a, it's an absolute blessing but also it has its challenges not to become a burden. So now when we move to conversational, we moved in fact to a somewhat different approach. As I said before, the average flyer on us is 1.4 times a year. The average frequent flyer with us is anywhere between 10, or sorry, between eight and 10 times a year. So that one is likely to have the KLM app installed on your phone. But if I all ask you to pull out your phones and see the number of apps you have and the apps you use on a very frequent basis, you're probably not more using more than 10. You may have installed 50, but you use probably 10. And with that philosophy, we figured out that our frequent flyers, they're using our app, no problem on that. 
They take control, they do their rebookings, they do everything themselves. But for those who are flying with us 1.4 times a year, or even less, they will not download our app. They will not be on our app. And we should spend millions, if not tens of millions, to promote our app. So what do we do? We move to the apps, in fact, where they are. So our philosophy when it comes to social media is, be, is really being where our customers are. So that means if our customers are on WeChat, we should be on WeChat. If our customers are on Facebook, we should be on Facebook. If our customers are on WhatsApp, we should be on WhatsApp. So in fact, next to developing our own app and our own physical presence on where, where we are for our frequent flyers, for all the others, we wanted to be on these platforms in basically where they spend a fair part of their lives. And with relatively simple interventions, we created very good cooperation with all these companies, be it on Facebook Messenger, be it on WeChat, be it on Twitter, and be it on WhatsApp, where you can basically do your interactions when it comes to boarding passes, notifications, and so on. It's really a fantastic way to interact with our customers. But with that, we see an increasing need of not only customer interactions, but even frontline staff. And there's nothing more frustrating for our frontline staff to be confronted with customers who are much better informed than they are. There's nothing more frustrating for a cabin crew to have a passenger already telling them that the next flight is being rebooked or canceled or changed. So we should be able that with the increased interaction we have with our customers, that 30,000 people and especially 9,000 cabin crew, 3,000 people in the cockpit, 5,000 at, at, at the stations, we should be able to have them the same information and the same knowledge. So it really brings a new challenge when it comes to making sure that the customer and the employee involvement go hand in hand. And, and with that, in fact, social media has become really just a ripple in a much larger digital sea. It started with social media, but when you really want to embrace it, we feel we should do it throughout the entire company. So some of the other examples we heard this morning on luggage and some of the other things were rightfully so mentioned here are really the core to make sure that digitization is not only done in the interaction with the customer, but is done basically throughout the company. And with that, we need a scalable digitization. That's the core of the matter, and I'm glad with some of the speakers this morning and some of the other companies we can really learn from who have a much, much more advanced way of scalable digitization. I think for us, the biggest challenge here is the uh, enormous increase of digital interactions with our customers and the enormous increase of our employee digitization. And with that, we need scalability to achieve what we want, personalization, for all our customers. So these new technologies are really helping us and are basically helping our staff to do what customers expect. Wow me everywhere. Hey, it's my birthday, that's nice. Hey, this is happening, that's nice. Hey, I knew you lost three times, Massimo, you took a gin and tonic, so probably this time you want a gin and tonic too. So we can help you to get your service right. And at the same time, we can do it faster, much faster and much quicker. That's really where new technologies make a good interaction between the physical interaction and the technology interaction with it. So in fact, we sort of embarked on a program which has created a lot of momentum internally. Technology supports it, but it's always human first, and technology is nothing more eventually than an enabler to do a better job for what we already do for 99 years. But that requires really that we sort of superpower our staff and give them digital tools everywhere. And this is a little bit of a personal story, but it's surprising to see how some of the operational departments, and I started 26 years ago at KLM in a very operational environment, and that some of the operational departments were still very much to sort of the old fashioned way of working and old technologies. But when we use new technologies, not only to our frontline staff, but also in the field of maintenance, also in the field of aircraft turnaround, it really opens up an entire sort of new world where we can help customers faster and where we can help them better. Coming in a few words, and I think someone was applauded this morning by not mentioning artificial intelligence. I will, I will take that chance and not use the artificial intelligence, but I think it's, it's, it provides a great opportunity when it comes to helping our customers. And at this point in time, we already have 
thousands and thousands of services to our customers dealt with by artificial intelligence. We have analyzed thousands and thousands of conversations and with that 60% of all our social media customer services replies are done by artificial intelligence. So they're really being dealt with in a way, basically learned what was done by others. And with that, we have basically found a good way of having the full attention in the situation where it's needed and less attention where it's the more standardized questions. So what are we doing? In fact, we use data for more personalization. We are where our customers are, philosophy being where our customers are. And at the end of the day, we experiment with some new technology like voice, where we see we can get some even some packing advice for our, for our customers. Is it changing the world? No, it's not. It is just a gimmick to start learning and to start working with it. Because we firmly believe that the next stage indeed of voice would be, give me the next flight to San Francisco. And we want to make sure that when you get that answer, KLM pops up in the line of companies being called for. So, in wrapping up, human first has been in our DNA for the last 99 years. So for a service-oriented company like us, there's no way to change that. We're going to keep that and we're going to continue on that. But we're going to use basically this human interaction supported by an enormous opportunity technology has nowadays. I think we have seen since the S-Cloud in 2010 what we could achieve so far and for us we are still at the very early stages of what we can do going forward. And if I see the big effect of some of the things we have introduced and be it the WhatsApp communication or even some of the WeChat things we are doing and if I take that part, if I see how quick it's going, for example in China, uh, I think we really uh, um, should put a lot of resources internally to continue to catch up with that fantastic environment to make sure that we can continue to do what we have been good at and what, where we stand out for our customers, yet at the same time do it in a way which our customers expect and will continue to do so. Thank you for your attention. The clock says another two minutes. I prefer as a punctual airline to be two minutes before time <laughs> rather than to be late. Peter, thank you.